Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you all so much for stopping by. To those of you who are new, hi there, my name is Jojo. This channel is focused on our family's journey to financial freedom. If that's something you're interested in following along with, then please consider subscribing. And if you are enjoying the contents of my video, please don't forget to give them a thumbs up or leave me some comments below. Let me know what journey you're on, um, any questions that you have, or just to say, hey, I hope you all had a lovely holiday. Ours was very nice. It was quiet. Um, we were able to celebrate with my mom. We went to her house on Christmas Eve, had lots of yummy food. Then on Christmas Day, my just very relaxing. We played games. It was a beautiful day. Um, our kids had some um, things to play with outside too, so we went for a walk. I just want to wish you all a wonderful holiday season, a happy new year. We're moving into 2021. It's very exciting and I hope you all had a lovely holiday. Today what we're going to be doing is one of my favorite videos to watch, my favorite videos to film and share with you all. It is the closing out of my second paycheck of the month and for this paycheck what we do is figure out our cash flow which is the money after all of our expenses are paid and that money that's left over gets thrown at debt currently is what we're using it for because we're on our debt free journey right now. So this is our week four check-in for paycheck number two. I'm going to get you guys switched over to the variable expenses, weekly check-in sheet, and my transaction log because that's where I start all of my weekly check-ins and we'll get started. All right, here we are at my weekly check-in sheet for my variable expenses. And then over here is my transaction log. This is where I track all money flowing in, flowing out, and then it's just color-coded over here. So we're starting with variable expenses, and those are all of the yellow boxes over here. And then you can see the category. And then right here is a running tally of the remaining amount from that category. I did my week three check-in last week. I'll leave a information card up here if you wanna check out that video. Today, what we are gonna be doing is we're still in paycheck two and we're gonna be reconciling transactions from December 24th to the 30th. And this is week number four. And as always, I like to start out with a an example um, just to show you guys how I tally up my numbers. So what I do is I find the last purchase I made within that category, which groceries, I stopped at Costco, I spent $146.30, I budget $400 to last us two weeks, and I am under budget, this remaining, by $31.58. So in the last two weeks, we spent $368.42. But to find out how much I spent this week, I just subtract this $148.86, and that tells me that we spent $219.56 on groceries for week four. Let's see, so we'll write minus two, 1956. And I am really impressed that we stayed under budget because we, we ate a lot of food, y'all, like a lot of good food, um, expensive meats, we do fondue, meat fondue, um, sides, all that stuff. And somehow we managed to squeak by staying on a under budget. Eating out, we had only ate out once, um, and that was the day after Christmas. The kids had received some money and gift cards, so we took them to Target to choose out some gifts, and we had stopped at Chick-fil-A and gotten something from there, so that was just that one stop. Overall, we were under budget by $11.03. Of course, with all of the yummy food, we were not keen on going and eating out much. For household, we just needed some dog food from Costco. So that was the only purchase, $28.99. And finally, we have been able to stay under budget in this category. It has been out of control. Um, mostly with our pets, we have a lot of different pets, some older dogs um, that are kind of declining in their health and needing things 
Let's see, so then for gas, we only spent $53.16, and we were under budget by $20.64. My husband, he had spent $24.74. He ended up being over budget by $17.56. I had not spent anything, but all of this is going to be rolled into a sinking fund. So I'm just going to put $80. When you add all these together, it'll be the $80 I'm counting. So remaining is technically $80, but I'm zeroing it out. So this is not, that, the zero is what's going to be included in the remaining. For my youngest, or my oldest, he did not spend anything. He'd had um, $20 of cash last week, so he has zero remaining from what we give him. The Littles, when we took them to Target, they had gone over budget on some of the items they had chosen, so they ended up spending, they had money from family, and then we'd also kicked in some, so they ended up spending a total of $31.98 for my daughter. My son was $31.97, and we budget $20 for each of them. So my daughter was over by $11.98, and my son was over by $11.97. We did not have any unbudgeted this week. Woohoo! So excited. That has been plaguing us for the last, I, I don't know how long it's been. I, I don't know that I've ever not had a week where there's been unbudgeted. Um, and then when you add all these together, that totals $498.64. And overall, we were under budget by $7.79 when you do all the pluses and minuses here. So that takes care of our variable expenses, all of the yellow boxes. Now what I'll do is switch you guys back to my paycheck budget sheet and we'll finish reconciling all of our transactions, pull in the two weeks worth of variable expenses and figure out how much money we're throwing at debt this month. Okay, here we are back at the paycheck budget sheet. All of these sheets are available on my Etsy shop if you guys are liking the look of the system and think it might work well for you. I'm going to just start here at the top with income. We did have some green boxes. Those are the green boxes. I would had my Ibotta that I transferred over for $29.86 and that's considered extra. And I also had sold something on Facebook Marketplace and that was for $30. So total extra for this week was $59.86, which is awesome. Let's see, oh, that's written in the blue pen. So that was the... $59.86. Okay, and then I'm just going to check off these boxes. And since we are closing out this paycheck, I can go ahead and add all these together to figure out my actual income for this paycheck. So what we'll do clear that out. So we have 43.82.56 plus 939.82 plus 21.57.03 plus our two cents of interest plus 59.86. Actual income ended up being 75.39.96. Which is awesome. Okay, now we'll move over to my bills, which these are the pink boxes on my transaction log. And I had some down here. So we had our insurance that had come out that has been under budget. I'm not really sure if that's going to be staying that way because I think they did do some adjustments with um, the pandemic. 
the insurance companies did, but this insurance amount covers two vehicles and a motorhome. Next is our Alexa. Whoops, I just flung a pen head. <laughs> Let's see, so that came in at $14.99 as expected. And my uh, sinking funds, I did do, I'm gonna do the $2,000 that we're transferring there. And I bought some silver. I ended up um, going over here, but I don't mind because that is, we're just trying to be very diversified in our investments. So I'm just going to kind of slowly, um, every month purchase or set aside some money um, so I can maybe purchase bigger amounts, like gold is more expensive than silver on the website. Um, every month and just accumulate that just because if we are still invested in the stock market, but it's so volatile, and I'm, um, we're eventually going to consider investing in real estate as well. So I just kind of want to have our money in lots of different buckets. And for some reason, I had wrote, written giving in red, and that is not in red. That came in right on budget. And I'm just going to check all of my pink boxes off so I know those have all been reconciled. And when you add all of these together, we did come in under budget still, and this ended up totaling, let's see, $2,525. Okay, now we'll come over here to our variable expenses and this will be the full two weeks worth. So for groceries, we had come in under budget. We spent $368.42 eating out. We spent $88.97 household. We were also under budget. We spent $100.96. Gas, we were under budget. We spent $129.36. My husband, he was over budget. He had spent $97.56. And then I had spent zero, but my $80 is going to sinking funds. My oldest, he was right on budget with $20. The littles were over budget. My daughter had spent $31.98. My son was $31.97. Unbudgeted was the $37.99. And then again, overall, we were under budget at $987.21. Okay, and now before we move into our cash flow, I'm going to um, add a couple things to sinking funds. Those are the blue boxes on my transaction log. There are not any blue boxes on here as far as expenses that we made from those categories, but I need to account for the money that I'm adding to my sinking funds. In last paycheck, my husband was under budget and I forgot to pull in his money to where he was under budget. So I actually need to account for that. First of all, for the my face, this is whatever money we have left over that we didn't spend or were under budget for our categories. Obviously it's not gonna be for this paycheck, but last paycheck, my husband was under budget and he was under budget by $6.79. So I, what I should have done was pull that into his sinking fund category and that just accumulates for like clothes, for me like beauty purchases, things like that. So for him, I'm gonna write that right here, this $6.79. And then, I can't believe I forgot this, but what I had decided to do, there's a couple of things. I'm closing out my sinking funds tomorrow, but I had gone over budget on clothes and on Christmas. I was going back and forth on what to do with that because if my 
actual amount of money. Total for sinking funds is not in the negative, it's just within that category. And I'm obviously not expecting to use any Christmas money. Um, get or close, my kids are pretty set. But I want to just make sure that I have more money in there um, than I need. And since we were had so much more money than we were expecting for this paycheck, I'm um, what I'm going to do is put some money into the clothes and the Christmas sinking fund to kind of bring them back to zero. Um, so they're not a negative anymore. So what I'm going to do for that, let's see, today is... Gonna, I'm filming this on a Wednesday, so I'm just going to note this as the 30th for sinking funds. And the amount of money that I need for those two is $226.63. And it's going to be divided between those two categories. The other thing was my um, Paycheck One budget for January. It ended up, um, just how the money coming in and the money going out, how that ended up falling made us really tight on our budget. It was going to be like $20 that we were going to have left over as wiggle room. Um, the And then with the way the holidays are, there's um, going to be two days that are going to be short on that paycheck, which I did not realize. Um, and my husband and I were talking about that. So we're going to be short. And what I'm going to do then is roll over some money from this paycheck. Because normally I zero this completely out. But knowing that um, we're going to be short and it's already tight, I'm going to roll over $500. Okay, so that's accounted for here. And then my husband's dad bod money, I need to account for that here because if I didn't pull it out... Okay, and so that's six seventy nine. Okay, so now what we'll do is figure out our new total. See, I told you guys I cannot get through a paycheck <laughs> with a budget without using whiteout. Okay, so we're gonna add the two twenty six sixty three and five hundred dollar rollover and the six seventy nine. Okay. So that brings, let me grab my white out. You guys will probably hear my kids. It is holiday right now. So just kind of squeeze in this filming whenever I can. So now this is going to be written in red. Okay, so it ended up being 30 to 59 and 4 cents. Okay. And I cannot write on white out, you guys, so sorry if that looks awful. Okay, so there we are. Now what we can do is move over to our cash flow equation here. And what we'll do is we'll take our income, which is this 75.39.29 minus this amount here. So 32.59.04 minus our variable expenses amount, which was 987.21. Okay, so we still end up with a nice chunk of money to throw at debt. This is awesome. Okay. So we'll do 32.9304. So now what we'll do is pull that number down to here and subtract it from our HELOC. Because really when you look at the HELOC and the student loan, that's really the total balance that's left to pay on my student loan. Because we're using our HELOC to pay off our student loan and it's a refinance so um, 
you know, I've had people comment like, well, you, when you die, that will go away, which if, if it's a federal loan, yes, that is true, but this is now through a lender, not the federal government. So we're kind of at the mercy of the lender at this point. And I don't know if I die, if the lender is, um, you know, what they'll usually do is come after any other assets that you have to get their money or come after your family or things like that. So, um, that's why I'm just, you know, if, if anything were to happen to me, I want to make sure that my family is set. Um, my husband and I, you know, that we're, everyone's taken care of. So, okay, let's see. So that brought that down to $8,716.31. So cool. Okay, now what we'll do is figure out our total, $495.78 plus 39, 671.58. Holy smokes, we are under 50,000 and like well under 50,000, you guys. I did not think that was gonna be possible for us this year. That is really awesome. Okay, um, okay, so 48,800. $83.67. Whew. Okay, that's our number moving into 2021. And that puts us at, we've paid off more than 50% of our debt this year because we started in February with a little over $102,000. So that's well under, well over 50% that we've paid off. That is so exciting. Okay, um, so that's that's gonna wrap up this video you guys that is um how we're ending december what a great way to wrap up the year um i am really excited to start the new year with that being our number but yeah this is awesome and i just want to tell you guys thank you so much for coming along with us on this ride it's been a bumpy ride we have been so blessed. So this is for our family. This is coming from a place of a lot of privilege. Um, I understand there are a lot of other families and people out there in much worse circumstances and have been affected significantly by the tragedies of this year. And um, I just want to let you guys know that my prayers are with you and um, you know, I just feel so blessed that we have been able to continue on our debt-free journey because um, I know so many of you are just out there trying to survive. And um, I want to thank all of you who have come along with us on this journey. I have really appreciated your support and um, I just wanted to tell you all thank you and my prayers are with you and for those of you who are struggling, um, our, our prayers sending love your way and um, yeah, I'm, I, I feel overjoyed with the progress that we've made but it's also coming from a place of awareness that this is a huge blessing and that we are very privileged to be able to um, be in the position that we are in. Um, so yeah, that is going to wrap up the video for today, you guys. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. I will see you tomorrow for Sinking Funds.